this is John with Wattmaster Controls here today to do another segment of video training on the Comlink 5 and actually setting up the IP module. A uh, few things about the uh, Comlink 5 if you're not familiar with it. Uh, basically this device can be used attached to a desktop or laptop computer either via a USB connection or an IP connection using an IP module which is what we're going to focus on today. Uh, this is the actual IP module. It's sold as a separate kit that actually goes into the Comlink 5 to allow IP connections to internal and external networks. Okay, a couple of things we need to get set up here before we uh, actually install our IP module. Uh, we need to have what we refer to as our crossover cable, which comes with the IP module kit. Okay, uh, essentially in order to configure the IP module, you essentially have to have the crossover cable connected to your Ethernet port on your laptop or desktop computer. Okay, so you're dedicated to the board. Uh, the following step is going to require actually installing the IP module itself. Uh, it's essentially got four tabs on the bottom of it and a set of, uh, if you can see here, a set of connectors on one side. Essentially what you need to do is match up the connector with the IP module onto the base of the Comlink 5. It simply goes on here and snaps in firmly. And then that's it. At this point now, we're ready to go ahead and power our Comlink 5 up with the IP module. 24 volts and always observe polarity when connecting these devices up. And as well, we're going to connect our Ethernet connection here from our laptop or desktop again. If you can see here, I'll just show you a quick demo here. And we do have connectivity. We have flashing activity back here, so we're good. Now, at this point, we're going to uh, have to find out a few bits of information. Uh, the IP module comes from the factory with a default IP address of 192.168.1.25. Okay, so it has a default IP module or default IP address, I should say. What you're going to need to get from your your customer or wherever this is being set up at is you're going to have to get an IP address that they assign you, a default gateway, and a network mask. Those are normally three pieces of information that are needed to configure this. And again, Wattmaster cannot supply this information. This is going to have to come from the customer's network to get this to work. So we've got this connected. We've got an IP module in. And uh, one thing I'd like to point out is too, is that we do have some good documentation. Uh, I would always recommend downloading these guides and printing them off. Uh, and taking them to the job site with you if you can keep them with you because they do have some additional details in them that always help but essentially at this point we've got the hardware set up and ready to go uh, and now we're going to move over to the computer and actually utilize prism to update the ip module okay now that uh, we have the ip module physically installed in the comlink 5 and uh, I have attached what we refer to as our uh, crossover cable from the Ethernet port on the back of the Comlink 5 to the back of the PC that I'm using to configure the Comlink 5. And that is a necessary cable to use that will come with the IP module. So now that we've got this physically set up, what I'm going to do at this point is I need to go into the control panel and the network and internet settings. And what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to go into the network and sharing center and I'm going to change the adapter settings or the local area network connection on my desktop PC to something that matches in the range that the IP module is actually set at coming out of the factory. So what I'm going to do is local area connection. I'm going to go to properties and I want to look for internet protocol version 4, TCP IP version 4. Highlight it. Go to properties. And at this point this is the current IP addressing information on my desktop computer. But I'm going to need to make some changes here in order to communicate with the Comlink 5. 
So what I'm going to plug in here is, is I'm, the default address again on the Comlink 5 or the IP module that comes out of the factory is 192.168.1.25. So I need to be within that IP range in order to communicate with this IP module with my desktop computer. So I'm going to do a 192.168.1.25. Dot five, and that's going to put us in the same. I need to go back here and make a quick correction. This should be 192. 168.1.5 with this subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 0. And uh, we won't have a default gateway here since we're not communicating over a network, we're just basically communicating between the desktop PC. So what we're going to do at this point is, we're going to click on OK here. We're going to close this. And we're going to go ahead and minimize our adapter screen. And what we're going to do at this point now is we're going to go back out to Prism. And we're going to make a job site so we can communicate with the IP module itself. It's number six. We'll call this uh, IP module. I'm not going to have any port selected at this point, but what I'm going to need to do is come down here to my IP address in this job site. And again, the default address is uh, 192.168.1.25. I'm going to enter that. I'm going to say type of comlink 5, single loop. And at this point, this is all I really need to do. Exit out of here. Go down to my IP module job site. open it up. I just want to again verify what I'm trying to communicate with. That all looks good. At this point I should be able to go online and I do. And You can see here in the connection window it says 192.168.1.25. This is the address of the IP module again and I'm stressing this uh, as the IP module comes out of the factory. So now that I've actually made communications with it, or I am communicating with the IP module slash comlink5, I'm going to go up under communications. And one key to this too is you need to be make sure you're logged into your PRISM2 with administrator access. And the user ID is admin and the password's admin in case you don't know that. But what I'm going to do now that I'm online, I'm going to go up to my comlink IP web settings, click on that. It's going to come up and it's going to tell me what device I'm communicating with. Uh, Windows security, this comes out of the factory as default with no username or password, so I just click on OK. And now I've brought up my interface to configure my IP module. I'm going to go into network configuration first. And basically everything uh, stays pretty much the same other than the new address that I'm going to utilize for this company's network. So in this case, I'm going to type in the following IP address. My subnet mask is going to be 255, 255, 255.0. And my default gateway, I'm just going to leave basically blank because, again, we're not talking on a company intranet or internet network. It's just uh, the computer talking to the comm link. And I'm going to click on OK. It says done. 
Now I'm going to go to Comlink configuration. The key to this is protocol is always going to be 232. You want to make sure your baud rate's 115.2, which is high speed, data bits 8, parity 9, stop bits 1. Don't change any of that. Actually, there's really nothing on the Comlink configuration screen that actually needs to be changed. So just verify those settings, click OK. Again, done. At this point, we'll go to Apply Settings. And this could take up to uh, anywhere from 30 seconds to possibly a minute or two, depending on the speed of your computer and, and communications. OK, it says network connectivity has been modified. So at this point, uh, it appears that the uh, IP module is good to go. So I am going to exit out of here. Go offline, and now I'm going to go back out to minimize my prism two, and now I'm going to go back out to my network, local area network connection. Again, that's in control panel, network and internet network connections. Left click on my uh, local area network connection, go to properties, TCP IP four properties again. And now I want to go ahead and change this back to what it previously was. In this case, it was 10. Ten. Try this again. Zero. Zero, 197, subnet mask is going to be 255, 255, 255, zero. And again, this is specific to your company's network or your laptop network. The default gateway here in this case is going to be 10.0.0.1. And I'm going to click on OK. I'm going to close. I'm going to go ahead and minimize my network connections at this point. Now that we've completed the configuration of the IP module uh, through PRISM2, uh, the next step I want to do is actually bring up PRISM2 again and I have removed the orange crossover cable that was connecting my desktop PC directly to the Comlink 5 IP module and connected the Comlink 5 IP module into the company network here. So I'm going to go back out to my IP module job site at this point, pull it up, and as you can see here, this is the new address uh, as shown earlier that I put in the IP module to be utilized for the company. Uh, keep in mind that this IP address is nothing that Wattmaster supplies you. Uh, this is something that a company or an IT person at the job site has to provide you the information, uh, an IP address, a uh, network mask, and a default gateway possibly. But again, this is information you need to retrieve from the job site uh, Wattmaster cannot provide. So essentially what I've done here is, you can see, I went out, redone my IP address now to my new IP address, 10.0.0.91. Looks good. Uh, everything's still intact. I'm going to click Exit. At this point, I should be able to go up here and go offline, or actually go online. And as you can see now, my new address that I configured into the IP module here, where my mouse pointer is showing 10.0.0.91 has come online and at this point now uh, you are able to go out and you should be able to search your network uh, to find your Wattmaster controls, devices, etc. and uh, be able to uh, work just fine. Uh, we will have future videos but uh, this one is complete at this point and I'd like to thank you for your time.